Welcome once again, friends. This is our last session of Virtual Sunday School where we'll be focusing on the Beatitudes, uh, those blessings that Jesus gave as part of the Sermon on the Mount uh, where he says, blessed are the... This week, we're gonna wonder what it means to come down the mountain. And what I mean by that is now that we've learned all of this, what do we do with it? How do we incorporate it into our lives? How do we incorporate that Jesus taught where God blesses those who don't look that important, who don't have resources, who don't have power. Uh, what does it mean that God blesses them? And also uh, that God's kingdom is a community of love that looks so different from this world. Uh, uh, kingdoms in this world sometimes involve violence and harshness and selfishness. But what does it mean to be a kingdom of love? Kind of like just what God wants us to do. We're going to challenge each other that as we come back down the mountain, as we move into our lives, uh, as we live each and every day, uh, what it looks like to bring everything that we've learned into a new way for living. I've enjoyed this so much and I'm looking forward to today, so let's get started. I've really enjoyed these warm-up questions as we've moved through the weeks, and this week uh, we've got a great question. The question is this, when you look down at the world, when you're on an airplane or you're in a tall building, what do you notice? What do you see that you didn't see before? Go ahead and take some time to think about those, to talk about those with those who are with you, maybe to journal a little bit and then share later, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Go ahead and stop the video and take time to do that. Well, I hope you're in the mood to uh, and ready to listen to uh, the lesson today and think more about what it means to come down from the mountain. Uh, just wondering what you uh, said about what you notice and what you see uh, that you didn't see before when you're in a tall building or up in an airplane. One of the things that uh, I was thinking about is that when I look down from one of those uh, out the window of an airplane when I'm on a flight, uh, I can see a whole lot more than I can see when I'm on the ground. Uh, everything seems to be uh, in my uh, vision. Uh, so that's one thing uh, that, that I noticed. So uh, this week, we just kind of want to wrap up and take stock of what we've learned and how we and where we go from here. We've learned that God's heart is a heart of never-ending love and mercy. And that God's kingdom is a kingdom of justice and peace. And that God's promises are promises of abundance. That means we will never run out. We will always have enough. We've grown more into who we are as beloved children of God. And as we've learned more about God's heart, our hearts have grown as well. We now understand that God wants us to be happy in the fullest sense, not like the world gives to us, not where it's just so much, but God wants us to have full hearts and happy hearts and peaceful hearts. And God never wants that peace to end. We've learned what it means to live with gentleness and humility and mercy and that those things are what make us powerful. Not that we're strong, not that we have so much, but humility and mercy are truly power as God gives to us. Jesus knows just how hard life can be. Jesus knows the tears that we cry because Jesus cried them as well. Jesus knows just how harsh the world can be because Jesus experienced the harshness. Remember, Jesus went to the cross for something he didn't do. He suffered. Jesus also knows what it means to be persecuted. Jesus 
understood that people didn't like what he was saying and they tried to push him to the outside and make people not like him. Jesus knows all of these things. And we've learned that Jesus is with us and that we have each other as well as beloved children of God, as believers in Jesus. And, and we don't go through these hard things alone in life. We have Jesus and each other as part of our peacemaker teams. So now it's time to go out into the world to remember all these things and to make a difference so that other people can become part of the peacemaker team, so that other people can know God's love, mercy, and grace, so that others can have full hearts and experience the abundance of God's love that never ends. It's time to go back down the mountain. It's time to live with those people who are so much in need of hearing and experiencing a message of hope. It's time to go now and to live it out, to love our neighbors with open hands, with open hearts and open minds all together for the kingdom of God. Hey friends, I just wanna remind you once again this week uh, to download and open up uh, that family page. On one side, there's the coloring sheet with the questions that you can go through with your family throughout the week. And on the other side, it kind of gives us a little bit of a review of what we've learned this week. So make sure you download those and I hope you've enjoyed them each and every week uh, and taken time to color and to discuss uh, so that you can just carry the, along what we've learned here and uh, the kingdom of God with you throughout your week. Well, as we've experienced the blessing of all that we've learned, uh, I want to give you a blessing now before we go, a final blessing. So remember how we receive a blessing, just like a gift, because blessings are gifts. So we can hold out our hands like this, just like we were going to receive a package, and I will say the blessing over you. May God bless you on the journey of faith as we partner to bring God's kingdom to earth. This week, our activity is a bit of a matching game. And as part of the email and also on our website, uh, the activity page is out there for you to download and print out. And it looks like this. Um, on each side, there are some pictures that look a lot like those coloring sheets that we had each week. Uh, and here's the other uh, four that we have. So you can print those out at home. You can cut those out. And actually, there's a second page uh, where they're not colored. So maybe you take some time and color those in uh, before you get started playing this matching game. Um, you can pause the video now and color those if you want to, or you can come back later and rewatch. But I'm gonna ask you some questions or give you some statements. And uh, each one of those statements, I want you to think about which beatitude, which blessing that Jesus gives matches that statement best. And then you can hold it up and uh, I'll be sure to, uh, to give you the answers uh, as part of the email as well so you know which ones were which. Or actually, I'll just say them uh, as I read them out. Um, so I'm going to read, and if you need to stop the video right now uh, to cut these, uh, to cut these beatitude frames out, uh, so that you can come back and do the matching, you can go ahead and do that now. One day you will. All right. Well, now I'm going to read the these statements, and you can uh, decide which uh, beatitude matches it best. And then I'll give you the answer after a few moments uh, so that you know which one's right. So the first one is this. Our actions match the intention of our hearts. Our actions match the intentions of our hearts. Well, that beatitude is blessed are the pure in heart. All right, here's the next one. Instead of violence, we know that justice can bring us wholeness. That's right, that one is blessed are the peacemakers. Next, 
When someone wrongs us, we consider how to respond with grace. That would be blessed are the merciful. All right, and our fourth one is this. When we are not satisfied until our community reflects love and justice. Think about that one. That beatitude is blessed are you when you... Oh, wait, nope. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Okay, here comes the next one. We may be burdened and worried sometimes, and we may not be wealthy. That was that very first one where the beatitude was, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay, here's the next. We choose the ways of Jesus, even though not everyone will understand us. That one's blessed are you when you are persecuted. All right, here's a short one. We may be sad or grieving. That one should be pretty easy. It's blessed are those who mourn. All right, a couple more. We choose a way of gentleness and we work to bring wholeness to the earth. It's a short one. Blessed are the meek. And finally, we are filled with joy because we know we are joining with all the prophets, bringing God's kingdom to earth. All the prophets should be a clue. And that one is, blessed are you when people revile you and rejoice. All right. Well, Let's um, head over now and I'll say a final prayer and I hope you've enjoyed this activity as much as the others. All right, as we wrap up, just like we do each and every week, I say a prayer and you know how you can pray this new posture that we have where we hold our hands up like this as if we're receiving something because blessings are our uh, are gifts and also prayers are gifts. So I'll pray and you can repeat. And so let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your beautiful heart and topsy-turvy teaching. Thank you for changing our hearts and our lives, for helping us see everyone and everything through your eyes. Bring us down the mountain now with hope and strength to serve, love, and heal your world. Remind us each day what it means to be truly blessed and keep us steady as we follow in your footsteps. And all God's children said, amen. Thank you so much for being with me these past weeks. I have enjoyed it so much. I miss you a whole bunch. And I want you to be well. I want you to stay safe. And I want you to know that God blesses you. Blessing, blessing